What horror books do I want to reread? Stay tuned and find out. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach with Zach's Books and today I have got a horror book reread list. So pretty much these five books I have are some horror books that I either liked or I had read a first time and just kind of want to reread them because they were close to being like a big popular book for me but like they just missed and it's been a while so I can't like pinpoint what it was. So I want to reread these five and we will have the five linked down below and also don't forget to check out the podcast every Monday, try and do every Monday. Um, as well as all the other stuff we got going on down there. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into some horror books. Alright, the first one up is The Troop by Nick Cutter. So this is a book that was five stars. I absolutely loved it. I loved everything about the book. It was eerie. It was creepy. It was horrific. It was just... It, it was an... It was such a good book. And pretty much what you get out of this book is... A Scoutmaster leads a troop of boys into a wilderness and I guess like a lot of bad things start going on. There's a lot of like gruesome imagery like portrayed in this book. Um, he also wrote The Deep and a couple other things, but The Deep, I finished that. It's only like three stars. It was not really nearly as good as this, um, but this book was just so good and I definitely want to take a look at this again. You're kind of getting like like halfway through I think it changes perspective to like there's like this uh, medical facility like getting like log entries and like you're reading their entries and then you go back to like the boys at the campsite ultimately it's a really great story and I thought it was superb and I definitely need to relook at this book because it was just so good I like I just need to look at it again so there of the troop by Nick Cutter all right, next up is The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. So this book is based off of like true events that took place to a family um, and it was deemed The Amityville Horror. This book was just so creepy. It was my first like classic horror book. Um, I read this, uh, I want to say it was the, the Haunting of Hill House and then The Exorcist. And I was between The Exorcist and this book, but ultimately between those two, this one was just better for me. I really liked it a lot more. Um, Cause it's relatively fast paced. It's pretty quick, um, but it's a really solid story. Pretty much, if you don't know what the Amityville Horror is, I mean, there's movies based off of the events. There's obviously the event itself that took place. There's the book, it's basically this family go, moves into this house and a whole lot of bad shit starts happening to them in this house and it's not good. And the house still exists too, wherever it is in the world. I think it's somewhere in New York. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but I think it's somewhere in New York. Um, but the person who owns it now has this, like a museum. They don't actually like use it as like a house house, which I can definitely see why based off of reading this and seeing the movies. Um, but yeah, ultimately it was such a good story. I gave it five stars and I just want to get back into reading a classic horror book. So honestly, between this and The Exorcist, it's pretty much a toss up, but I definitely would say The Amityville Horror is the one that I would want to read first. So there you have The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. All right, next up is I would consider like my wild card book because four out of these five are like well-known books. This one kind of is too, but I think it's a little bit more of a sleeper. And that would be Hex by Thomas Old Hovell. So I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Sorry. Um, this book is by a Dutch author, and it is about this town that has this weird, like, curse on them from this, like, witch that kind of wanders around the town. And pretty much how the witch works is she has her eyes stitched closed, and I guess, like, I, I don't remember. This is why I need to reread it. I'm not sure if it's, like, if she touches you, something bad happens to you, or if she, like, opens her eyes somehow and sees you, like, something bad happens. 
I like I don't remember what it is what happens. As it always seems to be, a group of young men decide to totally screw their town over and start doing bad things to the witch, and a whole bot, lot of bad things happen to the town. So, it's basically, it's like, you can't leave the town, you can't, like, get married and move out of the town, because, like, it, like, it, I, again, I need to reread it. This is why I need to readdress this book. But when I read it, the ending is what really stood out to me with this book. It was such a creepy ending, it was so good, I just, like... It, it raised the star rating to almost like a four and a half or five. Um, again, why I need to reread this one. But I definitely really enjoyed it. Um, I remember enjoying this like crazy. And again, Stephen King's The Blurb in the Front. Totally, totally brilliantly original. So, I mean, I, I just need to reread this. He also has a new book out that came out recently called Echo. I need to check that one out, but obviously I have not read that, so... That's not going to be on this list. But Hex by Thomas Old Whovell. Definitely need to readdress this book. All right, next up is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This book was phenomenal. Uh, I remember reading this for the first time, and it was breathtaking. It was such a good book. It was so creepy. It was so, like... It was... Uh, it was... It, I, like, read th this and the troop, like, pretty close together, I think, and I, like, I knew after that that, like, that year of reading, like, any other kind of horror book that wasn't by Stephen King was just going to be, like, nothing's going to compete with these two, and I ended up being right. So, basically, this is about a uh, two girls who, like, started out not really as friends, one of them, like was forced to go to this girl's birthday party, and I think she was, like, one of the only ones who went or something like that. And what happened was they ended up becoming best friends. And sometime down the road, they're at, like, this camp. One of them wandered off into the woods in the middle of the night. I think she was a sleepwalker. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Uh, again, I need to reread it. And pretty much what happened was some weird, mysterious thing happened to her, and she pretty much, like changed personas and the other friend was like starting to get detached from her because she was starting to go more towards the popular people and then a lot of strange crap started happening to those popular kids and there is one very very graphic scene with one of them that I am like triggered by still to this day and it's just like if you know the one I'm referring to, then you know what's up. It involves a dog, so. But I definitely need to readdress this book because this and the troop were just so good, and I just want to, like, solidify that these are, like, my top two non-Stephen King horror books, and they pretty much will be, so. There you have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. All right, so if you've watched this far, which hopefully you have, you're probably wondering where my Stephen King book is. Well, I ended up picking Misery, and realistically, I probably could have picked about like ten more. So, if you want to see a Stephen King exclusive reread list, let me know in the comments, because I for sure would do that. Because just picking this one was a task and a half. So. Definitely would make a list of just pure Stephen King. But anyway, this book, if you know what this is about, this is about an author who gets into a car accident and is taken care of by a nurse. Uh, pretty much it rescues him, takes her, takes him to her cabin, um, and pretty much tries to nurse him back to life. But twist is, she's his number one fan, and he just wrote a book that kills off the main character in his main series and she does not like that she ends up reading the manuscript for it and yeah does not go well for him and I remember reading this and hated the little interludes of reading the book he's writing for her and that's why I kind of like didn't enjoy the story that much um, but I had heard from someone who did read this book and they said it actually like felt better reading it when they read it and they skipped over those parts. So, um, but yeah, no, that's 
kind of why I picked Misery, because there were just little parts in it that didn't really make it as good as a book for me. And I'm hoping when I reread it and I skip over the little interludes of the book he's writing, just kind of makes the, more, the story more, like, smoother for me. So, but yeah, that's why I picked this one. So there you have Misery by Stephen King. All right, so that was my list of my top five horror books that I want to reread. Um, we do have a mystery thriller kind of list like this as well set up, and we will be doing that one. Um, but if you want to see a Stephen King exclusive one, let me know in the comments, because like I said, I probably could list every single book I've read by him so far. So, But yeah, uh, as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And let me know what horror novel you would like to readdress in the future. If you've read one, you liked it, or you didn't like it, and you just want to readdress it. Let me know in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.